So here's the problem, and I, I'm taking a quote directly from the UK uh, National Cybersecurity Strategy. And I, I wish it was mine, but I love it. You actually have to run as fast as you possibly can to stand still when it comes to cybersecurity. Because the nature of change is so fast, it's so complex, it's so disruptive. Uh, there's no point having five-year business plans. There's no, year, no point having sort of long-term pilot projects that gradually get scaled over the course of time if literally every six months there's a new gadget, new capability that comes online that allows, first of all, the early adopters, which are usually criminals, um, to fully leverage the technology in, in a very aggressive, in a very criminalized way while you're two, three, four, and sometimes five years before you even get to a basic level of capacity on the same technology platform. So we have a bit of a challenge in policing. If we don't really radically change, if we don't really significantly move forward faster than we've ever done before and we're ever going to be comfortable with, we're going to end up potentially like that family of mammoths out there heading towards a tar pit. Double challenge with police. It's not simply defending yourself against attack, like a private sector company or a government agency. You actually have to go on the attack. You need both defensive capabilities to be secure, to be vigilant, to be resilient against attacks, against attacks on your data, attacks on your systems, attacks on your personnel through those systems. But you also have to be able to go on offense. You have to attack the attackers. You have to track them down. You have to investig investigate their actions. You have to interdict their ability to continue to victimize. You have to then gather sufficient evidence that you can put before court. You have to then prosecute. And then you have to be able to, in some way, instill a level of punishment, assuming a guilty conviction is registered. All of that has to be done in the new cyber reality. Again, I refer to the UK. The Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police held their conference here in Ottawa back in August. The head of the cybercrime uh, strategy for the UK police was here. And they are now tracking 53% of all crimes in the UK have a cyber element. 53% have some element of cyber within the criminal co uh, commission of that crime. So it's not a cyber crime, it's just core crime, all crime, all the time. No point having a really fancy, sexy cyber crime unit of maybe a half percent of your entire police service who are going to be overwhelmed in basically 24 hours of work. Every single frontline officer, every single civilian member has to have some, labor, some level of cyber capability. Every single function with your service on the investigative side, on the attack side, has to have the ability to gather and manage and store and distribute digital evidence, not just within the organization, but within the full justice stream. And as we're getting into more integrated service delivery, upstream prevention type of work, you have to be able to share that same data to some degree with other agencies, public health, public education, national security, international crime organizations. My second point. Assuming that police officers and police commanders had unlimited budgets, unlimited finances, could hire the top 1% of every student coming out of every decent post-secondary institution in North America around the world, assuming you could pack all of that talent and all of the hardware, software, and licensings that you ever could possibly hope for, and do that immediately with implementation within a week, never, never land, that will never happen, but assuming you could get there, that strategy fails. In the policing environment, where our HR systems are very, very rudimentary, where our IT systems are very rudimentary, even if you brought in the best talent and the best IT, again, because of that Moore's doubling cycle, you're going to be out of date. Your skill sets, your experiences, your technology will be out of date within two to three years. I'm being generous, quite frankly. Therefore, how does an organization that is very conservative, very risk averse, start to conceive of ways that talent comes in and out of the organization in different ways and radically different ways than exist right now. How much of what we insource right now needs to be outsourced? Very, very different approach. Come to the point of the uh, lecture here today, the ecosystem. Some of the most progressive and effective policing is taking place in a very integrated upstream fashion. I referenced earlier before. Community hubs, which have very much been in, in, in vogue for a while in social sciences, is now becoming very much in vogue in Canadian policing. And so we have from Prince Albert, northern Alberta, small, mostly rural population of 100,000, to the city of Toronto with 3 million people and a police service the size of 5,000, there are hubs popping up all over the place. And these hubs are very simple, if you can conceive of it. A table full of people, only one of which, Ray, in this case, I'm pointing at you as a police officer. The rest of the folks are here for local not-for-profits, public health, public education. They look at high-risk individuals who are not yet into the criminal justice system. They share the information they have about the individual. 
from minor criminal records to truancy records to public health records to other social service records, and they say, where is the real problem with this individual? Let's really get to the problem and let's apply a customized wraparound set of solutions that in every case we try not to make it go into the justice system where the least effective and most expensive solutions reside. And so we do upstream interventions customized, but it requires the sharing of information for us to have a true picture. So Ray, I need your criminal record information. I need your intelligence data information. Are they really a jumped in gang member? Were they just an associate to the robbery or were they actually the trigger man on the robbery? Now, if we can get them to a less risky area, then we can probably do something non-judicial, right? Great, so you need to share that information right now. Now, public health, public education, let's get on board. Is this a good student with high potential but has is, is, is got lack of parenting and so they're skipping school? Okay, that's really what's going on here. So it's a parenting issue more than it's a crime issue. What are the supports in the local not-for-profit agencies that can allow us to get an intervention in there? I'm not making this up, folks. The Deputy Minister of Justice in Saskatchewan has done this work. He was the Chief of Police in Prince Albert that ran the hub model. By the way, 80% of all the cases that come to the hub table came from the police. 80% of all the cases that came. Easy number, 100 cases in a year. 80 of those cases came from the police. 80% of those cases had nothing to do with criminality, had everything to do with mental health. So now that the chief of police becomes a deputy minister, he has access to data across the province and across the federal government. He does a further bit of data analytics and he starts to realize that the top 1% of offenders in Saskatchewan cost the system, the criminal justice system, 60% of all the money going in there. And when he does a further analysis, that 1%, guess what? 70, 80% of that is a mental health issue. Where do you want to put your ever more scarce resources and tax dollars against? Where do your researchers want to point their energies and their intellect towards? How do you then take that information and reverse engineer the system that we currently have in place to make sure that we're looking at this from an upstream prevention integration solution that has health at its core, not just health for the individual, but for the family, for the community, for the city, for the society? When we leverage all those points of data, we share that information, we reverse engineer the system, we point those woolly mammoths into something more productive than a tar pit. All that said, it's a pretty slippery slope when he starts sharing data between the police and health and other entities. And so I've heard before, and I'll just repeat again, security by design, privacy by design, human rights by design are absolutely fundamental to anything that we're gonna do with the talent that we bring into our organization and the equipment that we, that we supply them with. At the end of the day, this all sounds great. I've been evangelizing this, Ray knows this, I've been evangelizing this within the policing and justice uh, system for probably over a decade. Uh, you're never a prophet in your own land. It's probably one of the reasons why I work for Deloitte now and no longer for the police. <laughs> but I will tell you that this will not happen because of a fancy speech by me or a wonderful event like this held in Ottawa. It will happen for one single reason, courage. At some point, the people who are governing our security and justice systems, at some point, the people who are funding those systems, and more importantly, at some point, the people who vote people into power, who enable and continue those systems to function, are going to say, this ain't working. It's too costly. It's not effective. It's not actually what we want. The data proves otherwise. We want to change. And people are just going to have to get the courage to make those changes. Until that happens, we'll nibble around the edges, we'll have wonderful conversations, we'll propose all sorts of new designs and redesigns, they'll sit on shelves gathering dust, and I'll be back here again on your dime to speak to you five years from now. <laughs> but I do believe there is courage. I know the people in the room, many of you, I've seen the documents being produced, I see amazing things coming out of small eastern provinces that excite me. I have former veterans of some of the most difficult policing operations and justice operations in the world. And when we sit down, we realize that there is a new way of doing business. It just needs a tiny amount of people, 15% critical mass, to shift the entire system in the right direction. So don't curl up into a ball, suck your thumb, and call for your mother. <laughs> Let's just get a few bright minds together and a few courageous souls, and we'll get something really cool going. Thanks very much. Well